not much has really changed in my opinion as oh. far as opportunities you know as far as just the right to leisure you know for black women in the united states one of the leading causes of um our mortality rate is heart disease you know um, and that heart disease often comes from stress, right? You are kind of responding to the times mm -hmm. with the work that you're doing. Do I, one of the things that I like to say about myself is that I'm more so a curator of like people and experiences than I am of art objects. I do think that it, um, the artwork itself can be a really powerful conduit to having important conversations. Mm -hmm. In this episode with Alexandra Eregu, who is an artist and curator, we discussed women empowerment, women's place in the arts, curatorial practice, African artists, and cross-cultural exchange. We have with us today, Alexandra Eregu. Alexandra, it's really good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us at PASS, Parallel Perspectives. Um, and how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm excited to get into the discussion. Okay. Welcome, Ijoma, Alexandra. I love the names. <laughs> your outfit is very beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So one of the reasons why we um, are excited about having this conversation with you is we are interested in the work that you're doing with Finding Ijoma you know, and the curatorial project on how to build a kingdom, mm -hmm. especially because we're looking at how, I don't know, should I call it social dynamics affects women's participation mm -hmm. in the arts and really in all walks of life, right? So this, this is a conversation that most people are already used to, but I see that you are kind of responding to the times mm -hmm. with the work that you're doing. And mm -hmm. so I hope that we get to talk about that. Uh, but I'll let Mr. Uche lead. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Benny. And um, I'm, I really love the name, Finding Ijoma, and um, how it connects to uh, our roots, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that name, Ijoma, goes back to West Africa, to Igbo land, you know, yeah. and I, I like the way she has used it as a moniker to engage um, artists here in the United States, especially here in Chicago, and um, incorporated it into a more um, wider idea of um, finding, you know, mm. building a kingdom, mm. you know, which uh, importantly, you know, connects to um, uh, female artists and their voice and their role in society, because we all know uh, what art does, you know, art has this, a uh, significant role of um, questioning the way society is run, mm -hmm. not only uh, within the United States, it's more or less global. And uh, from the little research I've done, you know, what they do resonates across the world. It's not just about um, engaging in uh, the politics or of the United States, but it involves um, which you are going to speak about. I know you have a lot mm -hmm. to say, but I'm just, you know, trying to set latitude, you know, mm -hmm. to, you know, um, what that building a kingdom is, you mm -hmm. know, with the project and, you know, inviting a lot of um, young women and artists from different disciplines. And I, I think that's where I want to ask you how you were able to develop this kind of project and when you started it. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, where you're going. I, I, want, I, yeah. I think I'm on the same page with you. I want to know what really inspired yeah. the the concept yeah. of how to view the kingdom yeah. for yeah. you. Yeah. Yes, I'm definitely happy to talk about that. This project and concept really surfaced um, in the fall last year um, around the passing, actually, of Queen Elizabeth. I was at an art exhibition of a woman like mentor of mine, shout out to Krista Franklin. Her opening uh, took place at DePaul Art Center and I had reconnected with another mentor of mine, Tracy D. Hall, 
um she had shared yes she is a really really important uh figure i believe now um directing oh my gosh i don't want to get her title messed up but she's directing uh the national libraries uh association oh great um so to that end she shared some words of just wisdom and feedback with me um we exchange a few text messages, one of them being shortly after the opening and reconnecting, uh, being this question that she posed to me. She said to me, you know, the question is now for you how to build a queendom. And uh, to that end, it got me thinking about just the timeliness of really considering with thought um, the state that the world really is, I think now, um, with this leadership that is no longer with us, what uh, she represented and sort of now having this unique opportunity to sort of choose potentially a new path um, uh, that serves, I think, the values of more people, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the values and just like liberties and, and freedom, you know, of particularly uh, African uh, descended people and also indigenous people, you know. Um, so to that end, I think I went, it was fall time. So winter time, I kind of go into hermit mode and do some writing and research and reading. Um, I came across uh, Bell Hooks are on my mind and read her essay, Women Artists and the Creative Process. I think it was written in like the 90s, but it was so wild to me um, reading her perspective of the state of the arts and the creative landscape for women, what now, four decades, three decades ago, not much has really changed in my opinion as oh. far as opportunities, you know, as far as just the right to leisure, you know, to- And, and, and Bell Hooks is, is a lady that you describe as a fairly successful, she was yes. a successful writer. Yes. Um, established scholar, esteemed mm -hmm. um, educator, you know, she passed. Um, quite early, I think. Um, and mm -hmm. one of the the arguments that is made around her passing is it ultimately being due to stress in mm -hmm. academia, mm -hmm. right? Um, for Black mm -hmm. women in the United States, one of the leading causes of um, our mortality rate is heart disease, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, and that heart disease often comes from stress, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Um, these are the types of things that I think about as a woman who um, my work exists in these spaces. I teach at a college, you know, I, I work with young artists of today who uh, want to embed scholarly practice into, you know, their own research and mode of, of being a practicing artist of today. Mm -hmm. And um you know, I also kind of work at the mm -hmm. intersection of uh, justice as well through my my curatorial sort of consulting with other organizations and, and clients. How did you go about, um, like, you know, I mean, you, I'm so, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to fit into <laughs> uh, the ideas that you started to think about after yes. you went through that in a moment with your mentor mm -hmm. and then, you know, seeing uh, Bill Hook's review on uh, women participation in, in the creative space. Yes. How did you, how did that help you narrow down on who to work with? Yes. Well, I mean, I have a visual arts practice myself. A lot of the artists in the exhibition are my friends or folks that I consider to be a part of my community. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty familiar with the type of work that they do. I, one of the things that I like to say about myself is that I'm more so a curator of like 
people and experiences than I am of art objects. But mm -hmm. I do think that it, um, the artwork itself can be a really powerful conduit to having important conversations mm -hmm. like the one we're having today. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the artists, to name a few that were in that show, Krista Franklin was in the exhibition, Shawnee Crow, um, Anulika Anibo, Loya, Lola Aisha Agbara, um, uh, Brianna Clearly, Brianna Robinson, Janelle Ayana Miller, Shaniqua Brooks. <laughs> um, one of the things that Amanda Hearth, Amanda Christine Hart. Yeah, the individual the artist. Things, yes, and, and just to talk about uh, how I was putting together the artwork for the exhibition, I was really looking for, it was kind of a call. I just shared with the ladies like, hey, I'm putting together this first iteration of this exhibition. Mm -hmm. I am entrusting you all to kind of share with me. We briefly did like studio visits or sort of intake calls. Um, okay. But around this subject matter of queendom, I'm going to ask you all to kind of pitch to me an artwork or two that mm -hmm. you feel like really represents this concept or theme. Um, some of the shared values that came up um, from this experience existed around our hair, um, our fashion, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Lamia Golar's paintings, for example. Oh my gosh, she a brilliant, brilliant, meticulous painter um, of just Black women's portraiture. But she uses this really lovely process of sort of individually painting um, in almost a musical or sort of rhythmic form, mm -hmm. uh, these different layers yeah. of the skin. And then she also has a really beautiful way of representing um, our textiles, our cloths. It reminds me a lot mm -hmm. of Ankara, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But she's someone who is an artist of African-American descent, has both, I believe, Choctaw um, and also you know, of course West African mm -hmm. sort of roots and yeah. her travels and experience across Art, beauty, and fashion has yeah, really yeah, influenced yeah. her her yeah. painting work. Um, so yeah, art, um, excuse me, beauty, fashion, hair, intimacy, love. One of uh, the artists also represented in the show was Kyle Joy Brooks, mm -hmm. who wrote a book which she considers a black love story, you know, of mm -hmm. Chicago. And um, the book talks about these two individuals who met um, in Bronzeville at the Herald's Chicken mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, just sort of <laughs> speaks to the black culture that exists specifically here in Chicago yeah. um, and them kind of finding their way together um, in intimacy and, 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 and love. Um, I will also speak to kind of Krista Franklin's work. She, we had two pieces from her, which were these collages that were printed on dye board. Um, her work really represents this valuing of the esoteric. Okay. Um, so we had one piece that was representing the tower and tarot, mm -hmm. um, the traditional Rider Waite tarot deck, and then also the death card. And so to that end, while we have artists like Andrea Coleman and um, Amanda Christine Hartz, whose quilts and photography mm -hmm. are really speaking to the role of um, the matriarchs in their family, uh, mm -hmm. Andrea Coleman's photography um, is these beautiful portraits actually of her mother. Mm -hmm. um, they're called Aura's Eyes, I believe. And um, Amanda, her quilts, you have one that she's produced herself and is very much so in the vein and spirit of what you might see coming out of the G's Bend region or sort of aesthetic of quilting in um, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but she also has a quilt that came from her great, great aunt represented in the exhibition to kind of speak to that practice that sort of stayed in and passing the down and passing down yeah. inheritance yeah. so um, uh sorry to cut in mm -hmm. uh, did you have no, a question? Yeah, okay oh, good, yeah, um question. because we are very much interested in the exchange between between people of african descent 
beyond the African continent mm -hmm. um, and how the arts and culture space creates room for those kind of exchanges and mm -hmm. conversations. Mm -hmm. I see that your selection, of course, was mostly of um, black or, you know, African-Americans, mm -hmm. right? Uh, where you also trying to create like a dialogue or I, I know you're interested in like collaboration between artists in the USA and artists in the African continent mm -hmm. and kind of having, yeah. So how did that play out for you through the How to Be the Queen Down project? Yes. What were you thinking of um, looking at both aspects of, you know, the, 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 the two continents? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one artist's work who's um, comes to mind is that of Shawnee Crow's um, braided portraits. They're these beautiful, stunning black and white portraits. Um, she has one piece that's titled Sankofa. And um, this braided style that is, um, I guess, commemorating this concept of to go back and get it. Are, these, uh, are those the portraits that look like works uh... I don't know, but they remind me of, I think there's some works that remind me of uh, Pa Jake. Or Jake Carey. Or Jake Carey. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, those ones. Yes, and yeah. that was, Loved you it. know. When I saw that, I actually thought it was a piece by Jake Carey. Yes, I, and which is so funny, I love that you bring him up because that was the flyer, you know, or the, mm. yeah, the jumping off point of the flyer for the show is oh. like, mm. you know, this concept of our hair being one of those forms of expression mm -hmm. and a shared value that mm -hmm. exists, you know, between mm -hmm. Africa and here in the Americas, mm -hmm. right? Like we use our hair the same way we use our garments to yeah. communicate, yeah. you know, um, how we want to exist or how we exist socially, you know, mm -hmm. in, in community with one another. Yeah. 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 Th thanks for raising the JK because I wanted yes. to ask that um, because it's a very popular photographer yes, and yeah. that particular image is very popular yes. and I wanted to ask um, you know in terms of the uh, artist addressing social codes mm -hmm. and I also noticed that uh, uh, most of your artists uh, you know, use the medium of food mm -hmm. um, like cuisine mm -hmm. uh, the hairstyle mm -hmm. and fashion to you know communicate their ideas and I want to know if that was or uh, that is intentional, you mm -hmm. know, if part of the curatorial order mm -hmm. which you have kind of um, developed, you know, or is it going to go outside of that order mm -hmm. or is it something that is going to continue over time? And do you allow your artists who you work with come in with their own, their own ideas, you mm -hmm. know, for them to begin to, you know, uh, build up narratives within uh, societal um, uh, happenings, you know, things that happen within, not just in the African American society, mm -hmm. but outside of that, you know, uh, circle, even the more larger American society, mm -hmm. just like Benita said, even going beyond uh, the United States, mm -hmm. the, uh, the North Atlantic to Africa, I mean, even other parts of the world, like, you know, the Middle East and all that. Yes, all these places. Um, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I do agree, it was maybe said earlier, but the project is certainly not a one-off project. Mm -hmm. I'm playing sort of the role of facilitator mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in the sense where I'm claiming to know very little to nothing. And I really mm -hmm. want participation yeah. mm -hmm. um, to sort of shape the experience and, you know, I'll kind of um, sculpt or help to frame mm -hmm. what is coming up. Mm -hmm. But this is an experience that I, I do strongly believe it, it thrives off of that participation and multivalence presence of voice and yeah. contribution, right? Yeah. Like this is not um, a singular uh, experience, right? It's one that I think has to um, hold multiple perspectives so that yes, as far as, yeah. um, I mean, one of the intentions with this exhibition, you know, dream, forum, whatever you want to call it, is to actually use some of the feedback that we received from uh, guests, visitors, and participants to then make a call for change, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in the places that we live, work, and play. Um, so yes. there's an element of resistance. Yes. So yeah, like you also mentioned voice. I wanted to uh, um, bring up the fact that there's also music. Yes. And yes. DJ. Yes. You know, so can you 
you know, <laughs> tell us. Yeah, your, your, your practice is pretty round. It's very yeah. well-rounded. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it's well-rounded, and I try to represent that in yeah. my curatorial projects mm -hmm. as yeah. well. You know, the exhibitions were not focusing on just one or two mediums like painting True. or photography. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got installation, you've got musicians, you've got, again, healers, you have um, folks who work in the... Uh, 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 food, you know, Ayana Chavez, for example, she mm -hmm. was the cook involved in the exhibition who produced this um, meal for us that was one of the side so, programming. Right? Yes, precisely. It was one of the culminating programs uh, that we crafted in order to kind of create this intimate setting for the artist participants and some other beloved folks from our community mm -hmm. to come together and share in this conversation. Um, yeah, in this this intimate sort of space and mm -hmm. setting. Yeah. Um, she created this venue that was inspired by, you know, her heritage, our heritage, the artists and the show's heritage. Um, we had like this Senegalese um, fish and rice dish um, the one called chibujen <laughs> i don't know if you uh, heard about yeah, yeah, chibujen, yeah. <laughs> yeah um no it this one started geez i'm gonna botch the name um <laughs> it starts i believe with the d um my own experience traveling like um and working as an artist extends to south america brazil yeah. india you know i recently wrapped up an artist talk at my show beyond blue that focuses on indigo right now yeah. um we had some attendees from the southeast asia institute come and mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. their experience about um just like how indigo um and that crop became a launching point for colonization and slavery mm. in you know southeast asia and mm. how yeah. you know we share our story um yeah. is shared in a lot of ways as a result of that and some that's sometimes something that's not always hit mm, yeah. and touched on yeah I yeah, yeah we uh, yeah I, I, we really want to see you build this kingdom you know <laughs> in a very um creative manner you know see that expand not just here but also for the benefit of um, artists who are coming from the global south yes. and what i would like to see alexandra irebu is to is for you to collaborate you know mm -hmm. with there are so many artists way back in africa who love to participate uh in this project and um we really thank you for coming thank you and we uh, maybe hopefully we want to see you back in our studios again I and, like uh, that. because you really have a lot to talk about and, and we've not even exhausted some of the questions mm -hmm. but yeah. time constraints but we we are grateful you can and thank yes. you so much for coming to our studio thank yeah you. in advance yeah. thank you so much thank Amanda. you